Hello, back to the hand today. <laughs> Some of my 3D prints. Uh, you know how much I love the anatomy of the hand. We're going to look at carpal tunnel syndrome, the anatomy of. Um, the thing about the hand is there's so much anatomy in the hand, you feel like you kind of, as soon as you get to, sorry, grips with the anatomy of the hand, there's always something else to learn about and the detail sometimes slips away. Anyway, we're going to look at the anatomy responsible for carpal tunnel syndrome. What is it? Where is it? So why does that come about? And what's the anatomy got to do with it? And how might you fix it? Number one, what is it? It's usually in the dominant hand, probably because it's usually an overuse injury, ailment. Um, it, there's usually maybe um, numbness in parts of the hand, tingling, maybe a difficulty in sensing temperature. There might be weakness of the thumb. Oh, that's, that's a bit of a clue. So it's a change in sensation and maybe motor function in the hand. Where is it? It's on this side of the hand. The, if we're in the anatomical position, the lateral hand or the thumb side of the hand, most likely to involve the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and maybe half of the ring finger. As it develops, you can get pain extending down the wrist as well, but that's where it is on this side of the hand. Ah, so then. Is this related to a nerve? Yes, it is. Well done, very good. Um, it's the median nerve. Whenever we're thinking about something affecting the function of the thumb, we tend to think median nerve. Okay, so we've got a median nerve problem, right? Where does the median nerve run? What does it do? Okay, right arm. And on this, on this right arm, I've taken some of the muscles off and we can see this nerve running in the middle of the forearm, kind of down the, the median part of the forearm. So this is the median nerve. Uh, named because, yeah, it's running in the middle. So the median nerve is running in the middle of the anterior compartment of the forearm, so it's going to innervate most of the muscles here. Now look, we've got another nerve here. This is the ulnar nerve. And we've got these arteries. And as we continue into the hand, look, the, this nerve, these arteries, we can pretty much see them running into the hand. But the median nerve, the median nerve disappears like it's going through a tunnel, <laughs> right? And then we can see it coming out here into the hand. Now the median nerve in the hand, um, most of the muscles of the thumb, certainly the muscles within the hand, the intrinsic muscles of the thumb, are innervated by the median nerve, which is why we associate thumb function, and the thumb is important in grip with the median nerve. So if you were to sever the median nerve, you would lose function to many of the muscles that can do these sorts of movements with the thumb. You'd still be able to do these. Um, but that would affect your grip, and we'd see the muscle belly here atrophying, shrinking. Now, we also see other nerves running up to the fingers. So we've got a couple of nerves in the hand. The ulnar nerve does a lot of work, but the median nerve is also going to carry sensory information back from the skin over the, the palmar surface of the skin, kind of on the thumb side, on that lateral side. We can see it running up to the fingertips here. So the median nerve will carry sensory information back from the skin here, up the thumb, up the fingers on the palmar surface, up to the tips over the top here, and it'll carry sensory information back from digit one, digit two, digit three, and this side, this half of digit four. The ulnar nerve looks after the other side. That meets with our carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms of numbness and tingling on this side of the hand, right? Okay, now where does it go? I'm glad you asked. Okay, here's my friend. And again, another right arm. Uh, we have the bones of the radius and the ulna, and we have the bones of the hand here. And in between, we have eight bones of the wrist. These are the carpal bones. Uh, so the carpal bones are the bones of the wrist and, you know, 
They let you do all those nice wrist movements, but they're little ditty bones and they slide over one another. These eight bones in two rows of four do not just form a flat bony thing attaching the forearm bones to the hand bones. No, look, they form a curved shape. So we've got sticky up bones over here and here. Now on the thumb side, we've got the scaphoid and trapezium bones. And on the other side, we've got the hamate with its sticky outy hook and the pisiform bones. And the reason they exist is because, or rather the reason they exist in that shape is because in the forearm, we have big bulky muscles that are able to change their length significantly and exert significant force through tendons that run to the fingers. Dude, that's what gives you that strength. I'm a rock climber, this is particularly important to me. And those tendons run through this joint, the wrist. So, <laughs> you can imagine if this was a pulley system, if you had a rope and you pulled that, as you flexed your wrist and your fingers, ideally those tendons would like to run in a They'd like to run in a straight line across here, right? And the reason they don't is because they're tied down here. They're tied down there by the flexor retinaculum. So they run, those tendons run through this channel and are tied down by a thick, tough connective tissue. This is known as the flexor retinaculum or the transverse carpal ligament. And now we have made a carpal tunnel. The ligament is important at holding down those tendons. The blood vessels avoid going through here because compressing blood vessels is a bad thing. We've got a load of tendons running through there, but the median nerve also goes through here. This ligament is not stretchy. It is tough. These bones are bones. They're obviously not stretchy or very compressible, which means that of all the things running through here, the thing most susceptible to compression, if we have any increase in pressure in there, maybe because the tendons get inflamed and start to swell, is the median nerve. It's the median nerve that's most likely to suffer, to be compressed, and when the nerve gets compressed, do you know what it feels like? Because if you bang your funny bone, you get pins and needles tingling up your forearm and into your little fingers. That's a, a, an acute nerve compression. If you have a chronic nerve compression, you can, you can imagine how the function of the median nerve would be changed. So we get those nerve signs and symptoms on the median nerve side of the hand. Clinical bits and bobs then. Um, okay, if any swelling of structures inside the carpal tunnel can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome, these effects on the median nerve, what can cause this? Well, the most common one nowadays is overuse injuries, typing at a keyboard. This is why it's probably more common in the dominant hand. Uh, developing uh, tendinopathies. The tendons here are also running through synovial structures. So inflammation of those synovial structures, again, through overuse. Uh, can lead to inflammation leads to swelling because it makes local tissues leaky as part of the immune response. Uh, that swelling's got nowhere to go, so it cross squashes the uh, median nerve. Pregnancy. This can be a problem during pregnancy because progesterone also tends to make capillaries a bit more leaky. Uh, so we see edema developing throughout the body. So pregnancy can be a risk factor for developing carpal tunnel syndrome. Being overweight can as well. Apparently, um, there are some other health conditions that have, so diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that can lead to a greater chance of developing um, carpal tunnel syndrome um, and things like that. How do you treat it? Um, if it's an overuse injury, sometimes rest is enough and putting the wrist into a splint to immobilize it, to force it to rest, because it's actually quite difficult to rest your hands because we use them a lot, that can help. In some cases, steroid injections help, but I think the, the published literature is a bit variable on that. It helps some people. Um, the reason this popped up is because we've been teaching the upper limb again this week, and 
Yeah, I think so much teaching, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it was this week. Anyway, uh, the hand surgeon was talking about how with carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, surgically, you could cut the transverse carpal ligament, also known as the flexor retinaculum, and that would release the pressure in the carpal tunnel and, and help solve the problem. So, you know, again, it's one of those things of, well, what's the cause? Treat the cause. If you're pregnant, giving birth should help. Um, if you have excess weight, losing that excess weight might help, and so on. But that's it. Carpal tunnel syndrome, what it is, where it is, it's caused by compression to a nerve, the median nerve. What causes that compression? The musculoskeletal structures of the carpal tunnel and the median nerve runs through it, compressing the median nerve if those structures get inflamed and so on. Anyway, oof, there we go. Carpal tunnel syndrome anatomy. See you um, next week. Mm -hmm.